This is the Fallout 2 scripter, originally made by Modder Anchorite, but currently being updated by modders Niren, Phobos2077, and Mr. Stalin. This sucker has a lot of surprisingly advanced features, including autocomplete and a dialogue node tree editor with descriptions of the commands, including syntax. Heck, it even gets semi-annual updates, which is impressive for any piece of software, let alone something that's completely free and only for modding Fallout 2. Before we get started with the grand tour, there's a slight update to the install procedure from the first video in this series, the Asphalt headers. If you're using the newest version of Asphalt for your mod and want to take advantage of all the new advanced features that Asphalt has to offer, then you definitely want to install the Asphalt Modders Pack. The link will be in the description. Just download the Modders Pack zip file and open it up. It's a 7-zip file, so you might have to install a copy of the open source 7-zip archive utility if you don't have an archive manager that works with it already. Google search 7-zip if you need to. Once you have the file open, double click to open the scripting docs folder and then the headers folder. Copy all of these headers to the headers folder we linked the scripter to in the install video, which for me is d slash fallout2 mod slash quantums mod slash scripts slash headers. If you don't know where yours is, open up your scripter and check your settings for the headers folder. Select yes to overwrite sfall.h, and that's it. You now have an updated version of the sfall.h header file, plus a bunch of other useful headers with more advanced features. Just remember to update the modders pack anytime you update sfall, as there are pretty consistent updates for both on a regular basis. Also, you should browse through the rest of the folders and read some of the files if you're interested in some of the more advanced programming stuff here. I'll go over actually making a script in a separate video. For now, let me show you around. On the menu bar, you've got the ever useful new dropdown. There are five predefined templates, critters, maps, NPC talk, object, and SFAL global. Each of these templates by default include reference files, procedures, and some variables common to each of the script types. The most descriptive of these is the NPC talk template, which has a short explanation for each listed procedure to give you a rough idea how to attach scripts to certain actions. For instance, Procedure Damage Pproc is called when the critter takes damage, and Talk Pproc is called when the player tries to talk to them. I'll cover these in more depth in a future video when I cover scripting in detail. Open and Save are pretty self-explanatory, except the Save dropdown has one extra option to create a template in case you want to make one with your own procedures predefined for the scripter. This little double arrow button expands and collapses all the procedures in the script except for the one you're working in. Undo and redo, same as always. These next two funky looking buttons are shortcuts for reducing indentation on the left and commenting out text on the right for sections you've highlighted. The back and forward buttons will jump the cursor backwards and forwards between places you've clicked in the script. These only work within a single script though, but it remembers each script separately in its own window. If you drop your cursor on a function in the procedure list, this green button with an arrow pointing down will take you directly to the same function in the script. And the drop-down menu has a shortcut to take you to a specific line number. The code drop-down menu has a bunch of formatting options, but probably the most useful is the split document option. This opens up a second window of the same script you're editing, which allows you to keep an eye on two sections of the code at the same time. This way you can keep your procedure or variable list in plain view while scripting new procedures. Only problem is moving the divider is controlled with a single pixel handle. Makes it tough to grab and move. The next four menu buttons are the most useful in this scripter. The list button will define your script in scripts.lst for you automatically. And if you click the dropdown, you will also have the option of defining it in scripts.h. This is not enabled by default. So you should click the dropdown and check it if you want to use it. This shortcut is probably one of the most useful in the scripter, although it is a bit buggy. In the panel that pops up, you can add a description, set the number of local variables, this is not done automatically yet, and give it a full name for easy searching. If you check the allow box, you can also add the script name to scripts.h here. At this point in the development cycle, I recommend manually checking the scripts.lst and scripts.h files after you add a new script, just to be sure everything got added correctly. The Include button gives you direct access to all the header files in the headers directory. 
Clicking the drop down arrow and selecting a header file will add it to the script wherever you have your cursor placed. You can also open all the header files currently included in your script. And the last option opens the headers folder. The dialog button is used to help make dialogues for NPCs. Clicking it is supposed to bring up a dialog editor, but if you're like me and hadn't set this up correctly yet, then it'll pop up an error telling you it failed to open or create associated message file, and will tell you it can't find a directory for dialog files. Unfortunately, in this version, the directory it tells you is incorrect. It's not looking for the scripts folder at all, and it won't add the correct folder in for you either. The correct directory is data slash text slash English slash dialog, and you just have to create each of the folders yourself. But once this is done, it's super easy to click this button and start creating dialogues for your critters. Clicking the dialog dropdown will bring up several cool, but not completely implemented, options for editing dialog. The message file editor will just bring up a blank version of the editor that comes up for regular dialog files. The nodes flowchart is really cool and might be one of the best parts of the editor someday, but it hasn't been fully implemented yet. Preview and testing appears to work correctly though, and you can use this to test your dialog scripts first without having to start up the game. I'm not 100% sure what functions config is for, but the mod author, Mr. Stalin, has said it's experimental and is necessary for the dialog diagrams in the nodes flowchart editor. This stuff is super sweet, and I can't wait to see what this all turns into in the future. And if you uncheck Open in Message Editor, clicking the dialog button will open a new scripter window instead of the message editor. Same difference, but the message editor is a little easier to use. I'll cover dialogue creation in more depth in a separate video. For now, as long as everything is configured correctly, creating new dialogues is super easy with this editor. And finally, the Compile button. There's a whole bunch of options in the dropdown, but 99% of the time, all you'll need is to click the button itself. Moving on to the extra panels. On the bottom is a shell window with a parser, build, and errors panel. When you click the compile button, any errors for your script will pop up here, and you'll probably be spending most of your time looking at the errors panel as you write new scripts for your mod. On the right is another window with a procedures panel that shows a list of declared procedures in your script. Double clicking any will take you directly to that procedure. A variables panel with a list of all the variables from all .h files listed in the include files section. Double clicking one will take you directly to that variable. And if it's defined in one of the include files, it will open that file and take you directly to the variable there. The functions tab is a list of the commands available in the scripter and should probably cover everything currently available. If you double click a function, it will get pasted into the script wherever you left the cursor. And if you click this little double arrow button in the top left corner, a duplicate of the functions tab will open up on the left. As far as I know, that's everything you'll need to know to get started creating your own script, as long as you have some experience programming already. If you don't, well, stay tuned, I'll be back with some actual scripting demonstrations in future vids. For reference, this scripting language is called the Star Trek scripting language, which is why scripts are saved with a .ssl extension. That's a little bit of the sense of humor that Tim Kane had when he created this engine. Remember to like this video if you want to get more people interested in modding Fallout 2. This is not the most popular content out there, but maybe getting enough likes on the video will increase the number of views, and that'll get more and more people interested in making new mods for Fallout 2. What would be really cool is if we made the modding scene explode, like Fallout 4's, or Fallout 3's modding, or Fallout New Vegas' modding scene. Jeez, those are some awesome mods coming out, man. There are some dedicated modders who've been modding Fallout 2 for decades, but nothing like what we have in the Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 scene. That is something that should change.